your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David. Good morning, darling. Have you been awake long? Good morning. Just a little while. Why didn't you wake me? You were asleep. I wasn't really. I was only half asleep. <laughs> what was the other half of you doing? Thinking. I've sort of been half asleep and half thinking all night. You must be exhausted. Not a bit. Do you sleep well? Half and half. I bet you were thinking the same sort of things I was. Could be. I think we'll like living in Chicago. Yeah, I don't see why not. I think I'd like living any place with you. And I wouldn't like living any place without you. That was sweet. Good morning. It's still early. Good night. Do you think we'll have a hard time finding an apartment in Chicago? Oh. Is that a yes groan or a no groan? It was a how would I know groan and I want to go to sleep groan. <laughs> you don't want to go to sleep. You had all night to go to sleep. I feel like talking. You always feel like talking. Well, now we've got something to really talk about. When do you think we'll leave? I'll have to pass. But look, darling, nothing is settled. You merely decided that if Mama came with us, we could take the next train to Chicago. There are other things to consider. What, for instance? Well, this, for instance. I'm not sure I can leave Roger just at the present. We have a few contracts pending, and I can't leave him flat. But I'll talk to Roger today and see what he thinks. Will that settle it? As far as business is concerned. Is there anything else concerned? Mm, a few other things. Like what? Well... Would you consider going to Chicago without Mama? Oh, darling, there's no point in going into that again. That's all settled. Mama said she'd go last night. I don't remember her saying she would. You don't remember her saying she wouldn't, do you? Darling, Mama... And there's no point in going into that again. It's settled. As far as you're concerned. And as far as Mama's concerned. Yes, I think Mama's mind is made up. What time is it now? Mm, a little more after seven. Is there any rush? No rush. Fine. Then I'll roll over. Good night. David, mm. how can you sleep on a morning like this? No, I don't know, but I intend to give it a try. Good night. David, mm. roll over in this direction, why don't you? Mm. Is that a no grunt or a yes grunt? That was a yes grunt. <laughs> Good morning, David. Oh, good morning, Roger. Mind if I come in? Not at all. Come ahead. My, you're looking chipper today, David. Oh, feeling pretty chipper, thanks. Oh, I had a bad night. Bad night. Simply can't eat lobster anymore. Looks like I can eat less and less every day. Lobster's a hard dish for a lot of people, Roger. Usually I blame it on my stomach, but today I blame it on my mind. Mm -hmm. Something on it, Roger? David, I may as well come to the point. Things aren't looking too good. They're not, Ed. No, those... Those contracts I've been bidding for, I... I don't think they're going to come our way. Have we been underbid by much? Enough. That if we matched the price or did it for less, there wouldn't be anything in it for us. Oh, I see. It looks bad, David. We need the new business. But we can't afford to do it at those prices. I can't understand it. I thought I figured out those costs to a dime. I don't see how anyone could afford to do it for less than our price. I really don't. Well, there's probably some politics involved, and I won't play. It looks like the firm of Killian is going to have some tough going. If it's going to remain a firm. What do you mean, Roger? If it's going to remain a firm, 
I've been mulling something over for some time, David. But I've been waiting to see how these contract bids turned out before I brought it up to you. I'm tired, David. Not so young as I was. This business is getting to be too much for me, I'm afraid. Oh, come now, Roger. It's the lobster. No. I can't start coping at my age with all these labor troubles, material shortages, and unscrupulous competitors. It's not worth it. After all my years in the business. It's pretty tough, I know, but the situation may not keep up. I've been saying that for years. I might have even given up the business right after the war if it hadn't been for you. For me? I thought with you in here I could swing it. It was worth the fight. I don't feel like fighting anymore. You uh, haven't made up your mind, have you? Just about. I might even leave New York and go and live in California. There's nothing to keep me in town. Not even my wife. As you know, we hardly live together anymore. I'm sorry. Don't be. I don't think she'd care if my letters were postmarked Los Angeles, New York City, or Constantinople. I wish you... you'd think this over, Roger. I will. But I wanted to tell you, David, that you're on a sinking ship. And if a lifeboat comes your way, grab it. Now, you know perfectly well, you old so-and-so, that I'd rather sink on a ship with you than... I know, and I appreciate it. But, David, as of now, if you get a good offer, accept it. As a matter of fact, it'll make things simpler for me. I... I don't know what to say, but... I think it's pretty swell of you, Roger. Pretty swell, nothing. I'm just a tired old man who's taking his hat out of the ring, making room for you young ones. Good luck, boy. Do you think Mama's back from Long Island yet with Aunt Louisa? My crystal ball is on the bum. Why don't you call her up and see? It's only 9.30. She promised she'd call me as soon as she got back. Then she isn't back. I think I'll call her up anyway. It doesn't cost anything even if she doesn't answer. All right, go on. Call her. Get it out of your system. No, I'm not going to. I'm going to wait until she calls me. It's awfully sad about Roger, isn't it, David? Yeah, pretty tough. Sort of makes you believe in fate and signs and things, doesn't it? You don't think he heard about Carrington offering you the job, do you? I thought of that, too, but he didn't even know Carrington when he was in town. Carolyn told me that. Well, that settles everything, doesn't it? We're really going to Chicago. Just think, a week ago we had no idea. Darling, would you be so excited about Chicago if Mama weren't coming with us? I refuse to even talk about it. Ostrich. Ostrich, nothing. It's all settled. David, isn't it? You keep asking me what I'd do if she didn't. Did Mama say anything to you? Ooh. What makes you think she did? Because you're not as excited as you should be. Because if it were all settled, you wouldn't put off calling Carrington and... and... Mama's right. You're worse than a de detective. What is it? Tell me. You want it straight? Straight? I don't have to tell you, do I? Mama doesn't want to go. Is that it? I think she wants to, all right. Well, then what's the problem? What's to stop Look, it? darling, Mama wants to go because, well, she's alone, and Chicago is pretty far away, and she's going to be a grandmother soon. But she doesn't think that's enough reason. Well, then what better reasons are there? Well, she's lived in New York a pretty long time now. This is where all of her friends are, where her life is. Those aren't reasons. Those are excuses. David, you told me you'd tell it to me straight. She doesn't think she should go. She thinks you're a big girl and that she's big enough that you two can live in different cities and still be happy. But why should we if we don't have to? Why make ourselves miserable if it isn't necessary? Would you be miserable, darling? Well, I... Uh, don't be I, afraid to tell me. Tell me straight. I wouldn't be as happy as if... No, David, I wouldn't be miserable any place with you. 
But I don't see why I can't have Mama, too. You can't always have everything, darling. If you take something with one hand, you you may have to let go of something with the other. Why, if you don't have to? That's what I don't understand. And there really isn't any answer to that. Not one that I can give. David, I'm not being a mama baby now, but I don't see why things can't be simple. Why we can't do things the way it'll make everyone happy. Mama thinks this is the way everyone will be the happiest in the long run. You mean she sees this as a sort of training for the day when she... Maybe. Well, I don't want to be trained for it, thank you. It's just as hard for Mama, darling, as it is for you. I, I think she's being very brave and very wonderful. Well, I don't intend to be. I'll save my braveness and wonderfulness for when I need them. I'm not going to waste them for when I don't have to. What do you want to do then? If Mama won't come with us, not go to Chicago? It won't happen it? that way. It can't. You've got to go. You hardly have a job with Roger anymore, and this is... Wonderful opportunity for you. You can't afford to pass it up. But, Claudia, listen to me. Mama will not come with us. She told me last night. Last night? I won't believe it till she tells me herself. What, what would she do here all alone? What would I do? No, I won't believe she isn't coming until she tells me so. Speaking of the devil. I've got it. I'll ask her point blank. Hello? Oh, Mama, we were just starting to wonder if we should wonder what happened to you. Darling, Mama, you've got to answer me this question. Darling, wait until tomorrow. Wait until she gets back. No, I want to know now. Mama, are you coming with us? Your mind's made up. Oh, no, I'm all right. Have a good time, Mama. Call me when you get back tomorrow. Goodbye. Sticking your chin out, darling. You were right. She said she won't come with us. She said... I don't understand, David. I don't understand at all. <laughs> you will understand someday, darling. And when that day comes, you'll... You'll thank Mama. Never. Oh, David, doesn't she know how lonesome I'll be? Of course. She of course can. she can. She can't or she'd come. Darling, how would you like to go to bed? I don't even know if I want to go to Chicago anymore. Life certainly makes people complicated. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Do members of your family hesitate to bring home unexpected guests? Or do they feel that hospitality will be waiting whenever they open the door? One thing's certain. If you have plenty of Coca-Cola in the refrigerator, the hospitality is there, all right. That friendly phrase, have a Coke, makes everyone feel at home. Have you checked your supply lately? Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes. Mm -hmm.